if you've been on the fence about buying an electric scooter from a startup, namely Aether, well, I don't think you should be anymore. I'm at their new manufacturing facility in Hosur and it's real and it's impressive. We're going to catch up with the founders of the company to see what's changed, what's new and what's coming up. Hi Tarun and Swapnil, thanks so much for being here. This must be a massively proud moment for you guys because this place is impressive, seriously impressive. Uh, walk us through the journey. How has it been going from where you guys were to where you guys are now? Because this looks like a dream to me. Thank you. Yeah, um, we didn't have a picture on, on, how, on, on how manufacturing looks like. Uh, but I think the first image for both of us when the plant come, came up was Wow, suddenly looks like we are a real automotive company, right? Uh, because before this, what we, before this, though we were producing a lot, it seemed like, you know, we were kind of running out of a temporary setup. It's still early stages, it's, it's a little startup-y. But this, with the structure and the process and, 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 the, and the rigor of everything, suddenly seems so much more real. We, we knew that, okay, there's one lakh uh, square feet, but like we didn't know what one lakh square feet really looks like. So when we walked into this, we were like, okay, this is huge. Uh, manufacturing is all about, uh, like, rigor. Like you just keep doing the, uh, you keep finding out what, what's stopping you and, and just keep improving on that. Like find the tiniest, of, when you really start doing the design, um, a lot of a lot of things you, you, you're still experimenting. You still don't know ex the, how the manufacturing setup will actually come, um, like what are the challenges you're going to face when you actually start doing a mass manufacturing. So, and then when you, and that's why the whole thing of 10 numbers a month. And then you uh, start looking at uh, all the issues which are there, slowly start ironing out one issue after the other. It's a, it's a very disciplined approach, slowly, uh, like one issue after the other, one issue after the other. Keep improving the capacity, keep, uh, keep uh, looking at uh, what all the inefficiencies in the system are. Um, keep designing more and more automation. Uh, all of that put together slowly keeps uh, like gradual ramp up to, to where we are right now. I think uh, uh, when, we, when we started, the, I think the first set of 10 vehicles took us almost three months. Then we were at a capacity of, uh, uh, as, as I said, like about 10 vehicles a month. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a very small line. We had about uh, 10 stations. So each, the, the whole various assembly lines are that there are stations on, uh, and every station there's some work which happens on it. We are sitting at uh, um, about 10 stations uh, at, at that point of time, and and the, what, what's called as a work content as at somewhere around. 700 minutes of work content per vehicle. Today we stand at about uh, about 40 uh, 40 stations, and the work content of about uh, 350 uh, uh, minutes. So like, uh, almost half a drop of that, and and four times the uh, number of stations to actually do the same same job. That was I think the, the biggest challenge which we had because it wasn't just building it it, is, it was not just setting up a new manufacturing plant, but setting up a, a new manufacturing line for a completely new type of architecture. So like uh, for, a, for, a, for a petrol vehicle, you would see that uh, the production line is a hanging conveyor, while for us it's a on the ground uh, conveyor. That's, that's primarily because we have our battery pack in the, in, in the bottom. So every single thing starting from, uh, like in a, in a traditional vehicle, the, the assembly starts from the frame, for us the assembly starts from the motor. Now that's a, that's a very big, big difference in, in how things uh, uh, are uh, coming up. So we needed a lot of creativity, a lot of new thinking. Nothing which was traditional would really work for us. Even traditional equipments needed a lot of uh, rejigging to work for our application. So um, a lot of lot of unlearning and then learning for for especially the experienced folks has, has gone in, in setting up this. Apart from the cells that uh, come from outside the country, uh, everything whether it's a battery pack, uh, motors, chargers, uh, touchscreen dashboards. Uh, the frame, body works, everything's built in India. Um, it's been a long journey, working with our partners, moving their supply bases to India. Uh, and an even longer journey in designing so many of those components and testing them and validating them and improving them over the years. Uh, but yeah, that's what it led to us. See, so the first one or two years of uh, us starting sales was us basically stabilizing the architecture and the platform. It's a brand new platform, starting from the frame itself, which is an aluminium, cast aluminium frame, or the battery pack, which we build in-house, uh, or any part of the vehicle, actually. A new platform takes a while to stabilize. Uh, so we didn't want to push, 
push out a lot of numbers all over the country before knowing that you know it all works well so we artificially constrained production for a long time but sometime last year we were reasonably sure that this is starting to make sense we want to now hit scale with this which is why we started to increase our distribution we went from two cities to now eight cities and we have announced 27 cities in the next few months all of them go live uh, we're setting up more charging points from 30 40 charging points to 100 charging points already done and we are looking at about 3 to 400 charging points by later this year so with that kind of scale we obviously knew the 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 bangalore plant won't be good enough we'll need something much bigger and that's how it came about